Good evening, welcome, and uh, thank you for uh, turning me on tonight. It's good to be here. You get to uh, put up with my preaching tonight. In fact, I always knew this would happen. My preaching would be so bad that uh, I'd clear the house. And uh, tonight, if um, I'm not going to ask Dashen to move the camera, but uh, if you could see what I could see, is just empty chairs. And uh, so uh, my worst nightmare has come true. But uh, thank you for, for being here. And in fact, some things won't change at all. In fact, uh, silence when I crack a joke, just like that. Um, <laughs> uh, but uh, different things will, uh, will remain unchanged. We're going to be preaching from the Word of God, and I uh, trust that tonight that will be encouraging uh, to you. So if you would please turn to Romans chapter 5, Romans chapter 5 tonight, and uh, we're going to read uh, from verse 1 down to verse 11. Romans chapter 5, and this will be a launching pad for us tonight. I want to talk to you tonight about conquering faith, conquering faith. So let's just read from the Word of God, Romans chapter 5, verse 1 down to verse 11. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into his grace wherein we stand, and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience, and patience experience, and experience hope. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely... For a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Much more then, being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more, being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into his grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Verses 1 and 2. I'm going to start tonight by asking a question, what are five basic spiritual needs? Not, not wants, but five basic spiritual needs. Uh, I have, I've got five here, your list may be different to mine, uh, but uh, first, uh, a basic spiritual need would be victory over sin. Victory over sin, ultimately through salvation, and then of course, uh, victory over sin daily as we uh, confess our sin to him. Uh, secondly, wisdom in decision making, uh, understanding, uh, comprehending, uh, biblic- biblically based. Uh, so we read the Word of God, we uh, comprehend what it says, and, and then, of course, with our understanding, we gain application. Uh, another basic requirement might be a spiritual uh, need, sorry, it might be living above our circumstances. In other words, keeping focus on God, our heavenly prize. Um, another basic spiritual need you might uh, have in your list is uh, gaining a godly character, that uh, Christ-likeness developed in, uh, our, through our spiritual growth. And then lastly, on my list, uh, number five, I've got conquering faith, conquering faith. Uh, the Hebrews 11 type of faith, faith that is dependent, not on, uh, dependent on, on trust, We set out to accomplish something for God's glory, not knowing what's at the next turn. Now, the last point I left on on purpose, as it's that point that I want to spend some time looking at tonight, our need for conquering faith. I have a quote here that I trust is an encouragement to you because I think it's very fitting for the time. Someone once said, our faith needs to take the place of fear. And prayer needs to replace panic. Our faith needs to take the place of fear and prayer needs to replace panic. Conquering faith, all of us us need it. Uh, A faith that 
conquers fear, uh, a faith that conquers panic, a faith that conquers doubt, uh, a faith that gives us a, a sure hope and develops steadfastness, a faith that builds godly convictions, causing us to stand and to be used by God. So what we want to do in the next few moments is to look at how we can attain this type of faith, this conquering faith. And we're going to do that, of course, by looking uh, to the Word of God tonight. And we're also going to be do- what we want to be doing is looking on the providences of God. So before we go any further, I want to uh, just pause for a word of prayer. Uh, so let's do that, shall we? Let's pray. Father, we thank you uh, tonight for the opportunity that we have to open your Word. And I thank you for the technology that we have tonight to be able to Uh, have uh, this available to us. Uh, Thank you, Lord, for uh, watching over us. And uh, we pray that tonight, as we open your word, that our hearts and our ears and our minds would be open as well, receptive to your Spirit's guidance, to your word. Father, may it be real to us tonight. May it indeed uh, work in us. We pray, Father, that as we feed on your word tonight, that we would be encouraged that our Uh, our faith would be built up, um, that we would become more Christ-like. Father, we pray that as we listen now and as we look to the Word of God, that we would have surrendered hearts. Guard us from distraction, Lord, and uh, help us to just come and meet you at the foot of the cross, fully surrendered, yielded, and willing and wanting, Father, your Holy Spirit to uh, work in us uh, at this next hour. So, Father, we Thank you again uh, for your blessing. ask now you would uh, work in our hearts. We'll give you the glory for it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you were asked the question today, what are the essentials of the Christian faith? You may come up with uh, an answer similar to me. I I would simply answer that, that uh, these essentials would be uh, uh, the deity of Christ, uh, salvation by God's grace and, and not by works, Uh, salvation through Jesus Christ alone, Uh, the resurrection of Christ, the gospel, monotheism, that is uh, the belief that there is only one God, and of course the the Holy Trinity. Now these are probably, uh, I'm sure we would agree, the the main essentials that that of course we should understand and believe if we're followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. However, these essentials of Christianity would not be complete without the ingredient that binds everything together. And of course, that uh, ingredient is faith. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 says, Now faith is the substance. That word substance means the assurance of of reality. Now faith is the assurance of reality, of of things hoped for, uh, the evidence of things not seen. So as Christians, we we live by this verse with the understanding that we believe in a God we cannot see in a physical sense, but we do see his work in our lives and all around us in his creation. We do all of this through faith because we know that faith pleases God. Uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, that he exists, and that he is a rewarder of them who diligently seek him. So what is the basis or what is the foundation of our faith? And all that is, of course, God, our all-knowing, our all-powerful, our ever-present, unchanging, infallible, without error God. From the day that we were conceived, he's never left us nor forsaken us. Every moment of our lives, he's providing for us, he's protecting us. He's forgiving us. He's strengthening us. He's healing us both spiritually and physically. And more, he's, he's working in us, transforming us and, and, and moulding us and preparing us for his will to be fulfilled in our lives. However, all of this falls apart when a believer's faith is weak because of a distorted view of the one who yearns to be revealed to us through his mighty and miraculous acts. We know that a Christian uh, with weak faith is, is the devil's playground. We know that, that doubt and, and fear, apprehension, uh, uh, hard-heartedness, which leads to unwillingness to serve the Lord, uh, all develops when our relationship with God is distorted. 
confusion creeps in. So, so then how do we develop or maintain this conquering faith? Well, we've answered that by focusing on the one who administers it. In Hebrews chapter two and, and uh, chapter twelve and verse two, what does it say there? Who did the writer say to look to? He said, "Looking under who? Looking under Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith." So we want to make, uh, we want to establish that first up. If we're going to gain this conquering faith, if we're going to acquire this conquering faith that's going to cause us to stand and to be used of God, then we need to maintain our right relationship with him. And he is to be the focus, the sole focus in our lives. And so to acquire this conquering faith, I want to encourage us tonight by looking into the word and looking on his providences. And we'll do this, of course, by looking no further than the Word of God, the historical accounts and foundation of our faith, from the Old Testament ordinances to the promises in the New Testament, the very Word of God, the very source where we develop our belief system. See, this faith needs to be convictional, and once it is, you'll defend it, you'll fight for it, and you'll stand up for it. So what is this word providence? Providence. What is providence? Well, if you look within the word, you might just take a pen now and quickly uh, write it down. P-R-O-V-I-D-E-N-C-E. Providence. If you look within the word, you'll see within that word the word provide. And uh, that's a very simple way how I remember what providence is. It's simply God providing for his people, uh, providing salvation, providing protection, providing forgiveness, uh, providing strength, uh, providing healing, as I said before, both he- uh, spiritually and physically, and then transforming and moulding and, and preparing. Simply, providence is God at work. If you look at two of the Pauline epistles in Philippians chapter 1 and verse 6, it says, Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it under the day of Jesus Christ. Philippians chapter 2, the very next chapter in verse 13 says, For it is God which worketh in you both to will and to do good of, uh, and to do of his good pleasure. In Galatians chapter 2 and verse 20 says, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ that liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the what? By the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. God at work. A definition of the word providence I found in um, Unger's biblical um, Bible dictionary, sorry, and uh, it says that uh, providence is a term that in theology designates the continual care that God exercises over the universe he has created. So you get this idea that providence is God at work, God caring for his people. I like uh, using a more simplified definition, and I came across this definition many, many years ago as I was uh, leading uh, and teaching the youth group of this church, Um, and it's a definition that I picked up from Frank Hemrick's uh, Positive Action for Christ material, and uh, and we're going to use this definition tonight and and break it up as uh, we look through it. But here's a definition that I like uh, that uh, simply explains what providence is. And you can write this down if you want to. Providences are every event and circumstance in our lives designed by God for his glory and our good. Let me say it again. Providences are every event and circumstance in our lives designed by God for his glory and our good. Now let's dive straight in here and we're going to tear this apart into three sections. All right, because it is a, 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 like a three-part definition. First, first part, every event and circumstances in our lives. If you would, please turn to Romans chapter 8 and verse 28. Very well-known verse, um, but I think it would be good for us to turn there tonight to look at it just briefly. Uh, Romans chapter, chapter 8 and verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. All right, now notice the word good there. The word good there means 
conformity to Christ, all right? And that's the ultimate goal for, for every believer. I, I'm sure you'd agree. Now, and God uses events and circumstances to achieve this. Notice what the verse says, all things work together. You see that in verse 28? It says, now all things work together. Now that is, if you like, circumstances. And remember the first part of our definition, every event and circumstance in our lives. Now if we apply this to, to verse 28 of Romans, we see that all things work together. All things. That's the circumstances that you find yourself in, that you're surrounded by. And, and then it goes on, it says all things work together for good. For good, and that, that there is conformity to Christ. Now, that's a good thing, isn't it? <laughs> I, I'm sure you agree. All right, so here it is. See, that, that, there's the thing. All things work together for good. God allows things into our lives. Why? For good. And what is that good? Conforming us to Christ. And that's the ultimate goal for every believer. Amen. Now let me ask you the question, are you, are you experiencing a bad event right now? Yes. <laughs> uh, are the circumstances surrounding this event beyond your control? Yes. All right, this uh, coronavirus uh, pandemic is, uh, is an event that uh, some would say is a bad event. Yes, it is. Uh, it's killing people worldwide and uh, it's caused us to uh, put, uh, it's caused us to change the way that we, the way that we live, excuse me. And, and it is a, a circumstance that is, a, it is an event beyond our control. Well, here's the thing. Know that God's at work. Know that God's at work and, and, and know that he is to be your focus. No matter how bad the circumstances get, even though that it's out of your control, stay focused on God. This is the basis of your conquering faith. This is the conquering faith that's going to cancel out panic, it's going to cancel out worry, it's going to cancel out um, a, a distorted view of the Lord. It's going to bring everything together, this conquering faith, by focusing on God. Now let's look at a few examples here. The Israelites, of course, uh, slaves in Egypt, right through to their exodus from, uh, from the same town from Egypt, through to the wanderings in the wilderness, through to the, delivering, the, the deliverance uh, into the promised land, we see right through all of that, a very big portion of our Bible, right? God was at work. God was at work. And, and, and he had to be the focus in order for, these, uh, for the Israelites to get through. We know that many failed. We know that many took their sight and their focus off the Lord and uh, they did what was right in the sight of their own eyes and, uh, and of course, God uh, delivered them into the hands of their enemies. Unnecessary. Needless, because they didn't stay focused on God. Uh, we look at the example of Job. Job uh, lost just about everything. His sheep, his oxen, his camels, his servants, and, and all of his sons and daughters. But, but remarkably, he did not lose his faith in God. What was Job's response? It says, uh, then Job arose, tore his robe, shaved his head and fell to the ground and worshipped him. He said, naked I come from my mother's womb and naked shall I return there. The Lord gave and the Lord has taken away. Blessed, he said, blessed be the name of the Lord. And in all of this, the Bible says, Job did not sin nor chain or nor charge, I should say, God with wrong. Job chapter 1, verse 20. God was at work, and he, right, God was the focus. Let's look at the example of the Apostle Paul writing uh, to the Philippians, living above his circumstances. We know that Philippians was, was written during Paul's imprisonment in Rome. And in fact, the book of Philippians emphasises the need for Christ in our life, Christ in our mind, Christ is our goal. Christ is our strength and, and joy through suffering. God is at work. God was at work with Paul and God was the focus. Let's look at a few verses in Philippians chapter 1 and verse 21. What does it say? For me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Who is the focus? Christ. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 7 says, But what things were gained to me, those I counted for loss. Uh, those I counted lost for Christ. 
Who was the focus? Christ was. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 4 says, Rejoice in the who? The Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Verses 6 and 7 of the same chapter says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto who? Unto God. Who's the focus? God. And he goes on, he says, In the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through who? Christ Jesus. Again, who is the focus? He's seeing it here. Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13 says, I can do all things through who? Through Christ, which strengtheneth me. So here's the basis for your conquering faith. Christ, the Lord God needs to be your focus. And you can see that through the examples that we just, that we just uh, went through. All right, we can see that. Um, uh, we can see that Paul, in our, in our latest examples, had this conquering faith. Paul was in prison. Paul was ready to, to face the death penalty. Paul had been falsely accused. The circumstances that, that surrounded him were out of his control, but he maintained his focus on God and he developed this conquering faith. Now, what did it conquer? It no doubt conquered fear. It no doubt conquered panic. It no doubt conquered uh, a doubt uh, um, by a faith that caused Paul to be steadfast, uh, convicted to the point where God was able to use him for good. Oh, do you have that conquering faith tonight? Can you, can you sit there tonight and say in your own heart, yes, I have this conquering faith? Or is God using this message tonight to open your eyes and say, you know what, I've, my focus is, is totally off. My focus is totally wrong. And I can assure you that if, 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 if your focus is off God, in these times that we're living in, panic is going to develop in your heart. Worry and concern is going to develop. Uh, doubt is going to uh, develop in your heart. All sorts of things will go wrong. And so can I encourage you tonight to get back to the Word of God and look at the providences of God and know that God is constantly at work in your life. Constantly at work in your life. So there's the first part of our definition, every event and circumstance in our life. The second part of the definition was designed and controlled by God. This is very important. Okay, we've looked at the, the events and the circumstances in our lives. Then we need to know that these events and circumstances in our lives are designed and controlled not by us, but by God. Remembering that all things work together for good, conformity to Christ. Remember that developing this all-conquering faith. You know, it's a comfort to know that God designs and controls every event and circumstance in our lives. You know, this gives us the assurance that God is at work in our lives and that he knows exactly what's happening. And, and through that, then, of course, he can administer uh, comfort and, and, and strength. You know, as was the, the case in the three biblical examples that we just saw, some events God actually plans for us and sends, uh, sends them into our lives. Other events he doesn't. Um, other events he doesn't cause at all, but however he permits them to come into our lives for a purpose. But the fact is this, whatever the case may be, you can be assured that God is in control of every aspect of the circumstance that you're facing, even today's circumstances. We look for an example uh, no, no further than uh, Matthew chapter 14, the disciples being led into a storm. You, you may know this story, be familiar with it. Of course, uh, the Lord there ministering, his earthly ministering, uh, there at the, uh, the, uh, the Sea of Galilee, and he uh, sends his disciples uh, out uh, to go uh, out into the boat and uh, go over to the other side. Now, of course, the Lord knew that the storm uh, was coming. He's omniscient. He's all-knowing. Uh, all and, um, and even with a storm brewing, uh, he decided to, to, to launch uh, the boat, uh, launch his disciples out to sea. Now, of course, we need to remember that the Lord never promised um, that we'll never see a storm in our lives. As a matter of fact, he told us that we're to expect trouble. Uh, John chapter 16 and verse 33 says, in, in, in part, uh, it says, In the world you shall have tribulation, but he does go on in the same verse to say, But be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. I have overcome the world. Uh, he's never said that we won't face storms in our lives. We know that God uses storms in our lives. 
for various reasons, no matter uh, what that may be. Um, but what he has promised, what he has promised, and this is very important for us to remember, is that he will be with us in the storm. He'll be with us in the storm. He will never leave his children alone in the midst of trouble. Hebrews chapter 13, the second part of verse 5 says, He will never leave us nor forsake us. And in that story there, Matthew 14, we know that it was just one quick word from Christ and the storm abated and the sea became calm and the apostles marveled at his powerful display of Jesus' supernatural ability over the elements. Now, this can be immensely comforting to the Christian in a storm. Faith in Christ is, is never misplaced or is never worthless. See, if he can calm the storms of the sea with one word, he can calm the storms of life as well. One person uh, said uh, some time ago, better to be in a storm with Jesus than anywhere without him. Better to be in a storm with Jesus than anywhere without him. Remember, God is at work. Don't be overhauled by the circumstances such as Peter did in that same story. We know that he took his focus off God. And of course, God then, uh, as, he, as Peter, he allowed Peter to walk on the water. Um, Peter uh, never did brag about walking on water. Um, he took his focus off the Lord and he began to sink. Um, don't be like Peter. Maintain your focus on God and his providence and then acquire that conquering faith. So we see that every event and circumstance in our lives has been designed and controlled by God and then for the third part of the definition, for his glory and our good, for his glory and our good. Isaiah chapter 42 and verse 8 says, I am the Lord, that is my name, and glory will I not give to another, neither praise to any graven images. Speaking of the greatness of God as he promises restoration to the land, uh, the coming Messiah, uh, millennial blessings, we have this remarkable statement. No flesh will be able to boast in his presence. That's not the purpose of, uh, of providences. Rather, they are, uh, they are there so that on the other side, when the storms rage stills and the seas calm, when you've gone through the furnace and you've come forth as gold, we will be better off for it. We'll be better people. Our focus would have been realigned and, 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 and focused on him and we'll have uh, caught and sighted and comprehended and understood God's providence in our lives. Then we too... I trust, will glorify him with our words and with our actions. May it be so that we echo the words of Revelation chapter 4 and verse 11, which says, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honour and power, for thou hast created all things, and for by thy pleasure they are and were created. Glory. See, here's the key to conquering faith, a trust that's beyond all measure. A confidence that will take us beyond our, our, our wider thoughts. And it's for this purpose that many historic events, some that we're uh, seeing today, recorded in the scripture. Romans chapter 15 and verse 4 says, For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 11 says, Now all these things happened unto them for examples, and they are written for our admission upon whom the ends of the world are come. 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16, 17, you know this verse well, I'm sure, says all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. All scripture was written for what? For our profit. However, we can only derive the benefit of these passages uh, that were, were meant to give if we meditate in them and look for the providence of God in them. So I want to conclude tonight by asking these questions. Is, is your faith wavering tonight? Have you lost focus on the basis 
of your face, our all-knowing, all-powerful, ever-present, unchanging, infallible God. Remember the fact that God is at work. God is at work. Every event and circumstance viewed in the correct way will reveal God's hand is always at work. Every event or circumstance or, or providence is God's way to demonstrate his ability to deliver, to build, to strengthen and to direct so that the believer will then see God at work and then glorify him in all that we do and all that we say because we have, been developed, we have developed that all-conquering faith. I want to conclude by reading an excerpt from a commentary that summarises what we've been talking about and really brings out some practical application. Speaking on the scripture of Jesus healing the paralytic man recorded in Matthew chapter 9, uh, we also see it in Mark chapter 2 and Luke chapter 5. And I'm going to read it uh, as, uh, as it was taken from the commentary. Four men, four men arrived late carrying a, a paralysed man on his bed and when they realised that they cannot possibly get him through the door, they carry their helpless uh, paralytic friend upstairs to the roof and, uh, and lower the bed in, in front of Jesus as he was speaking. Their determination to, to place him before Jesus displays their faith that he, would, uh, that he would be healed. Instead of being deterred by the problem of the crowds, they see the possibilities for solving it. If they could only involve God, they thought, things would go well. The persevering efforts of the four friends pay off for their paralytic friend as they help make possible his spiritual healing as well as his physical healing. Their actions are on example of the Apostle James statement in James chapter 2 where it says, I will show you my faith by my works. Christ finds a faith in the friends and he honours their faith rather than any faith the uh, sufferer has. Of course, no one can be saved by another's faith, yet another or others can help him along to Christ since only he can deliver him from the bondage of sin and being pleased with their works which is exhibited which exhibited their faith Christ responds to their resourcefulness and perseverance in behalf of their suffering friend their faith in Christ then is the catalyst in his performing this miracle our saviour works where faith is present Obviously, he can perform his work anywhere, regardless of human faith, but he often chooses not to act when people lack faith in him, as uh, happened, of course, in Nazareth. Hope motivates the paralytic's friends to manifest faith. First, uh, their faith is a wise faith in that it brought the paralytic to the only one who could heal. Second, it is a persistent faith because it uh, is undeterred by the seemingly overwhelming obstacles and third it is a sacrificial faith in that it gives of its time and effort to bring the paralytic before Christ. Fourth it is an unintimidated faith because it is unashamedly displayed in, in public and fifth it is a humble faith since the friends do not ask Jesus to come to him but take him to Jesus and then sixth it is a, a loving faith because the friends willingly expend great effort to get, real, uh, to get him real help. And finally, it is an active faith in that they take the man to Christ rather than sit around complaining and grumbling about their friend's woeful condition. See, that, that's conquering faith. That's a faith in action that is fully dependent and trusting on who? The basis of that faith, trusting in God. Trusting in God in, in recognition that he's the one who is working in and through us for his glory and our good. Tonight I just want to simply encourage you, if your faith is wavering, have the circumstances uh, just become too much for you? Uh, have you lost your focus on God? Are we focused on the circumstances that surround us today with this pandemic and maybe other situations that are happening in your life right now? What is 
more of the focus. What is it that you are meditating upon? The problem or the solution? God is the solution to your problem. And by maintaining or developing a focus on God with a realisation that he is at work, with a realisation that this event and this circumstance is in his control and is being brought into our lives for good, conformity to Christ, for his glory and for our good, then we will develop that all-conquering faith and we will bring about uh, or develop a right relationship with God, which then he can use that individual, of course, for his honour and for his glory. Christian, don't fade away into the shadows during this time. Don't become uh, uneasy or unsteady in your faith, but rather strengthen your faith. Strengthen your faith, realign your focus, focus on the providences of God. Look at the examples in God's word and how he was working in individuals for, for their good and for his glory and know that he's doing the same in your life right now. God is bringing about events and circumstances into, into your life that is controlled by him for his glory and for your good. Will you surrender to him tonight? Will you surrender to him tonight? Will you, will you get down on your knees now and just and pray and ask him uh, to realign your focus so that you can then develop this all-conquering faith and be used by him for his glory? Let's pray, shall we? Now, Father God, we thank you for this message. We thank you, Lord, for your word which shows us the providences of God. We thank you that tonight we can be reminded that Every event and circumstance in our lives has been brought into our lives by you and that you control every event and circumstance in our life and that you bring these events and circumstances into our lives for a purpose. Ultimately, to bring glory to you. Now, Father, it's easy for me to stand here tonight and Flippantly pray, but I realise that tonight people are hurting. Not just with this pandemic that's happening, but Lord, with so many things that are happening in each other's lives. Lord, I pray that you might just meet the needs of individuals tonight. May they be reminded that you are at work in their lives. May they be reminded that you are, uh, you, you, you are administering, administering grace to each one, that you're not a God of, of punishment as such, but Father, you, you, you've, you've, you brought, you've given your, your Son to come into this world to, to take upon the sin of all mankind, to deliver us into this, this, this dispensation of grace. Father, you don't want to see us suffer. You don't want to see us in pain. Father, you've, you've supplied our needs though. You've given us your Son, you've given us your Holy Spirit and I pray that tonight each one of us would realign our focus on you with the realisation that you are our hope, that you are our strength, that you are our comfort. Father, as the hymn goes, all to Jesus I surrender, all to him I freely give. Father, may that be the, the prayer of our hearts tonight, that we may find ourselves resting in you and experiencing the peace that passeth all understanding. Father, give us patience. Give us understanding. But above all, administer your blessing upon us. Bring comfort and strength and peace into our lives develop that all-conquering faith that we may conquer fear and doubt and panic and sin in our lives. We give all praise, honour and glory to you. In Jesus' name. Amen.